One of my sons was lost while crossing the border. We could not tolerate the torture of the Myanmar government. They killed our people, bodies were lying there, we were helpless there. The government's people burned our houses. They also killed our small children. How can we live there? You have seen on the news media how much torture they are doing to us. All right, let's get more on this now from Tui Tui Thane. She joins us from Perth, Australia. She is an associate professor at Curtin University and an expert on Myanmar's economic development. Professor, in the five years since the crackdown against the Rohingya began, Myanmar has faced several rounds of sanctions. Are any of those sanctions working? Well, sanction would have worked more if Asian countries and governments also join, but that's not the case. But that's not to say that sanctions, Western sanctions will not work. I mean, Western sanctions targeting military economic interests are bound to work because, I mean, that's sectoral as well. And, um, for example, oil and gas, you know, that's the biggest revenue earner for the military and, you know, uh, sanctioning on the uh, Myanmar oil and gas enterprise has hurt a lot um, uh, the military's economic interest. So it, it would have worked more if international community come together, you know, a, a, as a force, because sanctions work better if you have more uh, countries join. But that's not the case here. We have um, a significant, you know, uh, Chinese investment uh, still there. The, the former UK ambassador to Myanmar has, has just been detained in Yangon. This, of course, comes on the fifth anniversary of that crackdown as the UK has announced new sanctions and legal action in support of the Rohingya. Uh, clearly, this seems to be in retaliation to that. What could be some of the political implications here? So it is hard to work out what aim the junta is 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 wanting to have, you know, by arresting um, uh, Miss Vicky Bowman, you know, she has been uh, conducting, say, workshops on business and human rights, you know, so she wants, uh, she, she promotes, uh, you know, um, responsible business in, in the country. So what aim would, 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 do Junta want it by arresting her? It is hard to hard to imagine. You know, um, maybe that uh, Junta has lost the plot. You know, they they under pressure. Um, don't know what they're doing. Um, I, I can't see any strategic aim by arresting uh, Miss Vicky Bowman. The uh, military leaders were barred from the ASEAN meeting earlier this month, and you had mentioned that Asian countries should be doing more. Um, are they starting to step up and, and try to isolate Myanmar? And what, what does that possibly mean? Well, they, they have isolated Myanmar, Myanmar Junta, and not inviting them to their recent meetings, right? So that they, they have achieved that. But to go a step further, you know, to really hold the military to count for not complying with the five-point consensus that they agreed, you know, more than a, a year ago. Um, so, so ASEAN is divided on that, you know, members like um, Indonesia, for instance, has, has spoken out, Malaysia has spoken out, but um, the rest are, um, you know, not, not, they're not, not speaking with one voice. And, you know, ASEAN not being effective in handling Myanmar crisis has been a really, really bad for Myanmar, you know, I mean, through the sufferings of the Myanmar people. This ASEAN being not effective, and what is worse is that the international community staying behind you know, ineffective ASEAN, and that's not going to work in moving forward. I think international community has to be creative in finding solutions as ASEAN is it, it's not being effective and mm. unlikely to be effective in the future either. All right, we'll leave it there. Associate Professor Tui Tui Thane, thank you. Thank you.